the GRE went from being this to this, which means that now the GRE can be taken in under two hours. That's impressive because this test used to take almost four hours. It was extremely long. There were unscored sections, experimental sections, which they have now gotten rid of. A little bit about me. I've taken the GRE myself, scored a 329, and I've helped hundreds of students very well like you score similar scores. I'm also giving away free study materials, so go on to wamgrad.com slash offer to avail that. Now let's actually start the video. Let me tell you about a perfect two month plan where you will be able to ace the GRE and this will work for most of you guys, no matter who you are. But the first thing you have to do is to go ahead and book the test. So go on to the ETS website, book the test right now, today itself, before you start your preparation, because I want that knife hanging above your head. The reason for that is there needs to be a concrete deadline. If two months doesn't work for you, give yourself a buffer, do it two and a half months later, but book the test. It's ultimately going to push you to study even if you know there's those weekend parties going on maybe today you're feeling not so well you don't really want to study if you know that the test is in one month you're going to study my friend that's why the second most important thing to start with is to take a mock test why do i say this this is essentially important because i want you to understand your current performance once you understand your current level and then you can basically map out a pathway that, okay, this is where I am. This is where I want to get to. And now you need to just bridge the gap between this level. Third pointer, before I actually go on to explaining the exact day by day plan that you have to follow for the next two months, I want you to have this. And this is the best study material that you will be using for your GRE prep. I don't want you to use newspapers. I don't want you to use third party material that is not listed here. Try to stick to this and trust me, my friend, this will be more than enough. So there's two kinds of material that I always recommend my students. The first is concept building. Concept building is required if let's say your background was different or your background was still in math or English, but you have now forgotten, right? Now what you have to do is you have to build those concepts up, especially for math. And this is really important. I highly recommend against using ETS material for concept building because they make it seem like the test is nothing. But when you go for the test day, the questions are of another level. So which material should you follow for concept building? You should go on to first off the Magush material. There's 1000 questions that Magush has built for you along with the videos. And this video is not sponsored by them, but Magush videos will really help you essentially get those concepts back. In the entire video, I plan on not even recommending a single premium material, basically material that you can get free anywhere, right? But this is the only one I would want you to invest in if you are watching this. And even for that, you can go on to newstudymaterial.com and you'll get this material for way cheaper than it actually is. The other material, and remember, like I said, my goal is to give it to you all for free over here, is that let's say if this is not something you are ready to invest in, it's still costly for you maybe. It should not be because again, I gave you the discounted link anyway, but still you can go on for the Manhattan 8 book set in that case. That is also excellent for concept building, only this time these are not videos. So it's not as clear, you know, it's a bit boring. You have to read from the book, but it's still there. It's an option if you don't want to invest in money. Best part, I'm giving you a link to the Library Genesis website over here. You go onto this website and you can just go ahead and download these books for free, no charge. The second kind of study material that I want you to focus on is the one needed for practice. Concept building is one thing, but practice is required for everyone. The first material over here is of course going to be the Magush 1000 questions. I talked to you about the Magush package, which has questions and videos both. In this case, Magush questions would be the best fit to move forward with. Now, of course, like I said, Magush is the only premium material I recommended, but let's say if you don't want to invest in that, you have the Manhattan five pound book. Go for this book because it is excellent. And the best part is you can get this for free as well from Library Genesis. Again, I'll give you another alternative just in case you exhaust this book. The, the other one would be Princeton 1014 questions for the GRE. You can go for this one as well. Again, most of this material available to you for free already if you sign up on wangrad.com slash offer. Finally, we move on to point number five, which is actually the prep plan. So we're gonna start the plan. Now you know which material we're working with and what we're doing. Let's begin. So my friend, most cases, what I recommend generally to students, unless their case is very specialized, I recommend a three phase plan. The first phase is where you work without a timer. This is essentially where you build your concepts. So we can call this the phase one concept building phase. 
guys, so in the phase one, we basically have one month's time. All right, this is going to be our longest phase. We're going to do both quant and verbal sections in parallel. For each quantitative chapter, I want you to allot two to three days. Doesn't matter which order you do it in. You, you feel like doing geometry today, start with geometry. Algebra, three days later, no problem, start with algebra. And for verbal, we're gonna be doing six to eight days given that we have four question types. That's text completions, sentence equivalences, we have reading comprehensions, and logical reasoning, which is essentially just the shorter version of reading comprehensions. Now you may ask me, and this is a very general question, yes, where should we spend three days or two days in quant? And where should we spend six days or eight days in verbal? And that's a general question that I'll be answering soon. So like I said, first you pick up a chapter or a question type, depending on whether you're studying quant or verbal. Remember, both have to be done on a daily basis. Then what you do is you finish the Magush videos from this chapter, or what you go is you go ahead and study this chapter properly from the Manhattan 8 book set. This is your concept building phase, so we're studying each and every chapter, we're making our notes. That means that as soon as you come across a concept that is foreign to you, you don't really know about it, you write it down, you write the formula down, you write whatever you need to write down to make sure that you can in future revise that. The next thing you do is you practice. You do 50 questions from this chapter in sets of 10. And this is an untimed mode. So 10 questions later, what you do is you review. Then you again do 10 more. Just like that, you reach 50. So 10, review, 10, review, 10, review, and so on till you reach 50. Now remember, if you're solving a math chapter, that means you have two to three days. So at least for two days, you do 50 questions each. That means you have done 100 questions. For verbal, remember, you have six to eight days. That means even if you're doing 50 questions in each and every day, you are netting at least 300 questions. Then what you do is at the last day, at the end of two days in the case of quant or at the end of six days in the case of verbal, you check your performance. And if your performance is bad, that means that you need more time or more effort to be put into this area. And what that means is my friend, you'll spend an extra day in the case of a quantitative chapter or two extra days in the case of a verbal chapter. That's how you waste your two to three days or six to eight days. And of course, if you're spending more days on this chapter, do 50 questions each and every day again and again. Remember to review very well because that's how you will improve. Guys, until now I've discussed quant and verbal parts, but I did not discuss AWA. So for AWA, just do one thing in any of these days, shell out any five days. And on any of these five days, what you have to do is you study the Manhattan Five Pound Book. At the back of it, there's quite a lot, a lot of uh, AWA essays. Now we luckily only have to worry about issue essays because the GRE has removed the other kind. So only issue essays are being focused on over here. What you do is you look at the question, start using a notepad on your computer, notepad, not Microsoft Word, not Grammarly, nothing else, notepad application on your computer. You write your answer on it, you type it down, and then after it is done, and remember this is still untimed for now, after it is done, what you do is, you basically go ahead, check the answer in Manhattan Five Pound Book. This answer may be significantly better than yours, but what you wanna do is you wanna understand how you can improve your answer. Then what you can do is you can take the same answer from the notepad, put it in Grammarly and see how well you are writing, right? Maybe there's grammatical mistakes that you can actually avoid, which will make your score go up. So these are the ways you actually study for the AWA section. Now we come on to the phase two. And phase two means everything you've been doing till now stops. It's gonna be a little bit easier, it's gonna be faster. Why? Because now you are racing against the timer, my friend. Only this time, we just want to retain your good performance. We don't wanna go any lower than this. If you're able to do well already, you're getting like 80% on an average, I want you to still do 80% only this time with the timer. Since we only have 20 days over here and on each of these days we're going to be doing quant and verbal both in parallel you have one to two days for quants and you have four to five days for the verbal section now in this case again all you do is you take up a chapter and this time instead of watching the videos you just revise your notes it's easier trust me you revise your notes and you're done within a couple minutes then you have to finish three complete sections from verbal or quant, whatever you're doing basically, three complete verbal sections or three complete quant sections. Every day you're doing both actually. And these are gonna be in time mode. Now what are sections? Take a look at this image. For instance, the verbal set will have basically two portions, wherein the first one you will have 12 questions which you have to answer in 18 minutes. 
The second one, you'll have 15 questions where you have to answer them in 23 minutes. Similarly, the timings are shown for quantitative reasoning tests as well. But what I want you to do is do both the sections and that's one set and then you do it three times essentially. The only difference at this point is that we're doing it chapter by chapter or question type by question type. So every day you're not doing the whole exact uh, GRE sections. But what you're doing is you're picking up, okay, today all my questions are going to be from geometry. Then you do 12 questions and then 15 questions. And then you repeat it three times. Next day you do something else, right? And again, if your performance is not good enough, that's when you go on to the one extra day that I put in there. And of course, review after each and every set. Don't wait till you finish all three sets. Review after the first set, then start two more sections and review, then start two more sections, review. That's how you end it. Now, finally, we come on to the phase three, which is the king of all phases. Now, this is about purely mock tests. So what we're doing here is not going to be any more preparation. We're just doing mock tests every single day for the next 10 days before your test date. You got to get your body and your mind used to sitting down for the GRE because otherwise it's going to be a little bit hectic if you're doing it for the first time. And also until now, you've been sticking to one chapter or question type. This is the time where we basically mix everything up. So the thing that I like to do is, now it depends on who you are, what kind of a schedule you have, or if you're working a job or something, but usually I would take a mock test early morning, even if I was doing an internship or a job, right? Early morning, I did a test. Then I went for my job, whatever, right? I came back and I review my test in the afternoon or the evening, all right? And then once I review it, I understand if there's any weaker areas, maybe I'm still weak in data interpretation or something, right? And then I basically spend the evening or the night working on that concept, which I'm weak in right now. Now, a genuine question that you may ask me is, Yash, which mock test should we take because the GI is now shorter? Well, take these ones. You can do the Kaplan tests. They're very good. You can do the Princeton ones. They even rate your AWA. You can do the Manhattan ones. They've even, you know, had like shorter tests and versions like they have both versions available. And you can do the ETS power prep tests. If you need any of these mock tests and these packages at a discount, you can always take a look at the newstudymaterial.com. Because these are on an online interface, unfortunately, we won't be able to offer you these as a part of the study material that we've offered before, simply because it is payable. But we have contacts that can get you these accounts on a discount and you can very easily check that on the website. Hold on, before you go, I have three pro tips for you. The first is to use the Barron's 800 word list. It's a very good word list and if you take a look at it, it basically has almost every word that is very GRE specific and you can expect to see on the GRE. If you're doing just this word list and creating your own dictionary, it's usually good enough and you don't really need to learn too many words from other sources. But my second pointer is to create your own dictionary, of course, because we are working only with GRE specific material. If you see that there's some sort of a question that you are not able to answer because of a particular word, you put that word in your dictionary, you write down the word, the meaning and the sentence. I've created my own personal dictionary and it was very long, but it helped me score 329 on the GRE. Finally, as I mentioned previously, for AWA, write on the notepad, but later on verify your answer on Grammarly because grammatical mistakes cost a lot when it comes to reducing your score. So avoid that. That's it from my end, all the best. Now, before you go, of course, you can make sure that you sign up on viamgrad.com offer. You will get free study material. If you have questions regarding this, this all of these details that I've given you, it's a lot, I know. That's why you can reach out to me on my number, my WhatsApp number is in the description, or you can reach out to me on Instagram. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you like this video, a lot of effort goes into this, and I thank you for spending this time with me as well. Goodbye and take care until next one.